think I'm live. I don't know. I'm choosing this new way to do it. I'm doing Zoom direct to the YouTube channel. Welcome Pucks and Dreams followers and Hockey Nation fans. Uh, tonight was a really, really busy night in the NHL, and we will talk about it tomorrow with Coach Frenchie. Uh, however, has the Cole Caulfield era begun in Montreal is the title of this for a reason, because Cole Caulfield, in that, again, this is, I think, his fifth game in the NHL. He has scored his second overtime winner, his second goal of the season. He's come in with a huge reputation, obviously, and like all things, is super hyped in Montreal. However, he's so far delivering in very early returns. So what do you think? Is this the next franchise player in Montreal, or is he just a really good high school scoring winger, like kind of an Alex DeBrincat, which is probably the closest comparison I've been making. One thing about Cole Caulfield, he's like a way better skater than I realized. He's very fast. He's also smaller than we all think. So we think he's like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, he might be smaller than that. <laughs> I think he might be 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, I would like to see Cole Caulfield stacked up against Rocco Grimaldi in Nashville. I don't know if there'd be much difference between them, except Cole is legitimately, we're seeing his speed, his breakaway speed, like what we call a scouting separation speed. His ability to get away from a defender is going to, create so many scoring opportunities for him. He's able to jump into pockets and score. I mean, his first goal in the NHL, I don't know if you saw it. I won't play it here because we'll just get a copyright notice. Um, you know, he, he jumped into open space, got behind the defender. They couldn't catch him, didn't even try it looked like, um, and scored a real beauty goal. Let's look at his, I'm just going to look at this. Let's see. I'm going to look at, you guys don't have to. But if I look at his goal tonight, started with a breakaway pass or a breakout pass up to Petrie. Circle, Kakanyemi, and then I think he just delayed. Delays into the space, rocket shot, top shelf from basically the high slot. <laughs> I mean, it's hard not to be impressed by that goal. I'm sure, I don't even know if Jack Campbell could have done much. So the, the forwards, I think, are Kakanyemi and then Petrie's in there. And wow, he sidesteps on, on Brody, goes between the stick and ooh, just off the bar and in. What a shot. So he's super tiny. Let's just do this. I don't know if you can get, can you get a copyright notice if you're just showing a screen? Like if we look at this, yeah, he's pretty happy, but if you look at the, the still images of it, whew, he, he literally just delays, comes in. And you can see Brody pulls the stick across to try and take away the shot lane. And he finds a space right in here. What a goal. Draws it in, bing, bang, boom, off the post and in. So what do you think about this? Are you excited? If you're a Montreal fan, you probably should be excited. Uh, Cole Caulfield, who big time scorer in NCAA hockey, big time scorer now, didn't last very long in the AHL. And now it looks like he might be a big time scorer right away in the NHL. Will this last? You know, people were calling for, there was a lot of debate. Coach Frenchie was debating, saying, no, he's not going to come up. But then he was, I think he was cautiously optimistic. He got like helmet hair. This, this background is really weird. Um, and then <laughs> he's just killing it. Two game winning goals in overtime. Can he make it three in a row was one of the questions on the channel for the Hockey Nation live channel. What do you think? Are you excited about Cole Caulfield? There were some other exciting developments tonight too. Like there was a lot of games in the NHL. Buffalo looked like they were going to drop their fifth in a row. And, ooh, all wrong. They come back and they beat the New York Islanders. New York Islanders feel like they're a little bit off right now. Uh, you see two goals scores that were interesting. One, Tage Thompson, who's along with uh, Ryan Johnson, is the only piece left in the Ryan O'Reilly trade for Buffalo. And he scores again. And Tage, I, I felt, I, Coach Frenchie knows I argued before the season started that Tage Thompson was a legit top six forward. He's he's listed as six foot seven. I always thought he was kind of six four, six five, but if he's six seven, 
and he's got those moves and he's got that shot. He's going to be very dangerous. Um, Middlestad looked good tonight. And then on the New York Islanders side, Oliver Wallstrom scores again. So another U.S. development player. So big night for U.S. Uh, hockey development players. Um, we'll talk about everything tomorrow, but I mean, th there were some pretty impressive performances there. Uh, one also by Sam Reinhardt scores two goals in the come behind, from behind victory, the game tying and the game winning goal for Buffalo. Um, pretty impressive. Like, you know, they're not obviously going to make the playoffs. They're eliminated. However, um, you know, they were down Adam Pellick and then Oliver Wallstrom put New York Islanders up two to one. Tage Thompson scores in the second. And then in the third period, three unanswered goals. Rasmus Asplund continues his ascension up. So another young player getting an opportunity in Buffalo and he's producing. He's got seven goals on the year in 25 games. But since, you know, the, I think all of them have come since the coaching change. And then Sam Reinhardt, who was playing the number one center position for this team, scores at 15.56 from uh, Rasmus Ristolainen. And then he scores unassisted. I don't know if this was an empty net goal or not. Let's see. And then what's crazy is 28-year-old Michael Hauser. So if you follow the London Knights and the Ontario Hockey League, you know Michael Hauser. So I think Michael Hauser, am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, he was definitely a goalie for the London Knights. Did he win a Memorial Cup? Let's look it up. I think he won a Memorial Cup. 2012. And he was named the Tournament All-Star in the MasterCard Memorial Cup. So great story. For, I'm just going to share this. So Michael Hauser. Oh, that's interesting. They didn't win it. Okay. So then they, that was um, St. Hyathen or how you, however you pronounce it. Coach Friend should be able to pronounce it. Let's see. Stafford Smythe Memorial Trophy, most valuable player from Shawinigan. Um, Michael Hauser, goaltender, Memorial Cup All-Star for the London Knights. Interesting. So you see Jared Tenorti, Brandon Gormley, who was supposed to be a really good player, never ended up where Austin Watson. I forgot Austin Watson was a London Knight as well. Um, Henrik Samuelson, some guys that didn't really pan out in the NHL, but yeah, he was goaltender of the tournament. So did they win that year? Maybe they didn't. This is the individual awards. And then who won the Memorial Cup? It's the big national championship. Anyway, crazy story. He's 28. He hasn't played since 2020. They're desperate because all their goaltenders are hurt. They sign him to a contract and he comes in, he gets a win four to two. It is, it's a 28 year old rookie in the NHL. <laughs> yeah, so champions. Sherwinigan did win it. Um, let's look at the schedule there. London, yeah, there's London Knights. Yeah, they lost in the final that year. I couldn't remember. They lost in the final showing him, but, but Michael Hauser is known because he was the goalie there. And I think Michael Hauser is from Pittsburgh. Is he from Pittsburgh? Youngstown, Youngstown, Ohio. So what a crazy story for him. Congratulations. We've seen a lot of goaltenders with a lot, a lot of experience come in and have an impact on this shortened NHL season. It's been really interesting. Everything from um, Kakonen in Minnesota, um, Lankinen had a really good season overall in Chicago, although he's really faltered lately, but overall very big surprise and helped Chicago at least contend for a playoff position until tonight. I think they're officially eliminated tonight. Um, we saw, um, you know, Malcolm Subban's been all right this year for, for Chicago too. And we didn't really think of that he was going to have much of an impact. So yeah, some interesting goaltender stories this year. And then the, the Russian goalie Sorokin, is that his name? Sorokin in uh, New York for the New York Islanders. He came in as a rookie. So there's been some really interesting goaltending stories, but Hauser's got to be. Oh, and then Dustin Tokarski also for Buffalo. You know, he's kind of kicked around and had some NHL games, but he got another shot and he played very well for them. So crazy. Michael Hauser, congratulations on getting your first NHL win, only letting in two goals. This, this is concerning for the New York Islanders. And we were talking about this this morning, that the Islanders going to the playoffs without Anders Lee are not looking great. Barzal is like far and above anyone at this moment. And I said, they're going to need to get goal scoring from guys like Wallstrom and they need to, maybe Kiefer Bellows, they need to put him in a situation where he can start scoring. 
because I don't think it's going to come from Zajac and Paul Mary is not really turned on the Jets here. So I thought he would fit in really well, but maybe it's not going to work out the way I was hoping. The Islanders don't look great going in the playoffs. Kind of weird. Thought they would be a big favorite, but it's early. Maybe they're just kind of waiting to the playoffs because they're in pretty much. I mean, so another 1992 born player, by the way. So I coached at the 92s for a little while. Crazy. Interesting. All right. Um, what do you think about the performances tonight? Cole Caulfield, is he the next franchise player? And are we seeing the beginning of the Cole Caulfield era? Uh, what do you think of Michael Hauser's performance for Buffalo? And then Sam Reinhardt continues to rack it up. He gets his 25th goal of the year. So you think about it, he's probably on pace for 45, 50 goals if he can maintain that over an 80-game season. Pretty impressive. They're doing that without Jack Eichel. They were on a four-game losing streak. And then um, I thought Middlestead looked good tonight. So I don't know. What do you think? Are you excited about the Cole Caulfield era? What do you think about the other performances tonight? Oh, uh, what about Emil Bemstrom? No goals on the year. Gets a hat trick. Not all just a hat trick, a natural hat trick, and all in the third period for Columbus. They end up losing the game, but they, you know, they came back on the power of, like, it's crazy. We were talking about how these players step in and have had such an impact without, you know, really even much reputation. So there, that was a crazy game for him. Like, and then what about Sebastian Ajo? Sebastian Ajo, we'll talk about tomorrow, but three goals for Sebastian Ajo tonight, a hat trick for Carolina in their win. Um, Dallas ekes out a point tonight, but Nashville gets two. So Nashville's solidifying that, but Gustav scores for them. So that's going to be a good story tomorrow. Rupa Hins gets his 15th goal. Uh, Joel Kibiranta, who was a big playoff hero, comes back and scores for Dallas. Tyler Sagan scored his first goal of the season, so back from injury. But Barkov finishes them off in overtime. Coach Frenchie keeps talking about Gustav Forsling. He scored tonight, so he played really well. Um, Interesting stories. Lots of stuff to talk about tomorrow. Hopefully I'll uh, be able to jump on. And then Winnipeg loses again. What is going on in Winnipeg? They have, so is Nikolai Ehlers out? Josh Morrissey got a point tonight. He has not played. He got a goal. He has not played amazing. They lose 2-1 to one to Ottawa. Now, Ottawa's record, I think in their last 11 games, they are 7-3-1. and one. So, I mean, Ottawa's turning the corner. And they, they, they've beaten some surprising teams. They have winning records against some really good teams in their division. It's kind of interesting. Ottawa's going to be a force next year. So much great young talent. And they got confidence, and they seem to really gel with the coach. Yeah, Nashville wins tonight. They eke out two points in overtime. Um, wow, Minnesota came back and beat Vegas. Wait. This maybe needs to be a separate video. <laughs> Minnesota came back. They were down 5-3. What happened? Kaprizov is what happened. Okay, Kevin Fiala scores his 20th. Kirill Kaprizov gets his 24th. And then Jonas Brodin, it didn't even go to overtime. Kaprizov scores the game-tying goal. Oh, what the heck? Marcheseau, I think he gets his fifth goal in five games, but in a losing effort. The Wild, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, shout out to Peyton Krebs, his first NHL game gets a goal for Vegas, but what the heck? I just saw this, this game, I just, I walked out and I just looked at the score, it was 5-3. They win 6-5, holy smokes. Jonas Brodin gets his ninth goal of the year. Kiro Kaprizov with his 24th. Kevin Fiala, <laughs> Jeez. 20th goal. Starts off the, the scoring of the third. He gets assists from Rask and Benino, and then he assists on Kaprizov's goal. I got to watch Kaprizov's goal because they're all highlight goals, right? Of course, I can't show you because it'll be copyrighted. I guess I could show it and then cut it out later. Oh, Fiala fires on net, little rebound off Leonard, and Kaprizov buries it. What the heck? Here, I'm going to share it. Whatever. Whatever. Check this out. Yeah, you can see the end result here. But how does it start? His Fiala is right there. Gets shoots from the high slot, comes across. Protects the puck. Shoots it off the pad. 
in front. You can see right here the pad, and there's Kaprizov. Oh my goodness, Minnesota, no, oh my god, the Minnesota, I almost called them North Stars. Minnesota Wild come back, they were down 5-3, they went 6-5, the legend of Kaprizov, holy smokes, and Fiala, no joke either, like he's really gelled there too. Since Matt Zuccarello's come back from injury, he's just ignited them, he's like he's that one last piece that fits in really well, and they're all very similar players. Man, what a crazy night. All right, we'll see you guys in the morning. Join us. It's 11 a.m. Eastern time. It'll be 10 a.m. Central time. I might be on the move because I have to go to the airport tomorrow around that time. But I'll try to join Coach Frenchie. And uh, lots of games to review tomorrow. It's going to be crazy.